Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and this video is going to tell you how to avoid getting crashes after carb days following a ketogenic diet. I'm in my basement right now, a little home gym workout going on. <laughs> so it's pretty damn strict lockdown in Canada at the moment. So this is what I'm stuck with. And on that note, be very excited for the hacked home workout handbook, which I'm going to be putting out very soon. Literally, it's all the tactics. It's how I've made muscle gains during all these lockdowns, especially in Canada where it's pretty strict. And that's going to be dropping pretty soon. So stay tuned for updates. Click the little notification bell. But on that note, I'm going to be putting out loads of content during these next few months because I've quit one of my jobs. And basically now, you might have noticed I'm putting out two videos a day. Okay, two videos a day because I'm trying to outwork everybody else in the keto stuff okay that's what i'm now that i have the resources for that time wise that's what's going to be happening so thought i'd open up a little bit in this intro section of the video but let's get into the tips for avoiding crashes after carb days so lots of people when they're doing carb backloading or something they might run into this problem if they do it wrong now keep in mind for the whole part of this video i encourage you to stay to the end because i'm going to be putting out some amazing tips at the end but the whole premise of this video is that you should not be having these crashes or these like feelings that people hear about from like Joe Rogan and stuff, who's a great resource by the way. But in general, people are talking about, oh, I felt like shit after I had carbs, you know, coming from keto. That only happens if you do it wrong. I'm gonna teach you how to do it right in this video. Okay, so I hope you don't mind the informal setting here. Not that my bedroom is normally that much more formal. <laughs> uh, basically, for those of you who don't know my page, I've been doing keto for a decade at this point. And, you know, I actually just recently put out the Keto Shred program, which is the best fat loss tactics for keto dieting built over that decade and coaching people during that time. So you can go to my website, romanoketo.com to learn that. But at the same time, let's get into these tips, okay? Because that guide also has all the protocols for preventing these crashes. But here's the first reason why people will get crashes when they're doing carb backloading, targeted keto, or some sort of carb inclusion after ketogenic dieting. The first reason is not actually from the carbohydrates, okay? There are some ways you can mess this up by taking the wrong types of carbs, which I'll get into. But the first reason is actually from the processed oils, okay? So canola oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil, all these other things are basically closer to lab chemicals than they are to real food. And this is something that people, you know, in this niche commonly speak about. But the point is, these are not fast that your body knows how to process because they're chemically unstable okay they're heated to the point where they become oxidized and they're basically rancid especially if you're cooking in them or if the carbs you're eating were cooked in them or use them as basically uh, preservatives in some sort of way or a fat that's going to have a longer shelf life okay you have to remember a lot of these companies that are making sweets and snacks they have to make money so they have to compete on taste and the ability to sell their product so a lot of times what i'll even say a good little snippet from keto shred on RomanoKeto.com is when you are going to do some sort of carb inclusion, don't eat like five Snickers bars. You could eat literally an entire Belgian chocolate bar or some sort of chocolate bar from like a country in Europe where the restrictions are higher and the ingredient list is just actually cocoa, butter, you know, and uh, basically a little bit of sugar, right? Even if there's a lot of sugar, if it's coming from a clean source, then you're actually going to be feeling okay afterwards because your body knows how to handle sugar. Your body, our bodies know how to handle glucose. We need it through our bloodstream at all points of the day. Even when you're ketogenic, your liver is going to make all the sugar you need. And that's pure sugar. It's not contaminated. It's not processed. It's not tinkered with. So let's get into that. That's the second reason. The second reason is a lot of these snacks or a lot of these foods that people associate with carbohydrate, they're going to be sweetened with the most addictive sugars. So that's going to be high fructose corn syrup. They're going to add in uh, maltodextrin, a lot of high glycemic sugars that are meant to just crank your blood sugar through the roof and give you a crash. So that's the actual side of it with sugar. And it's not as if your body can't handle high glycemic sugars. It's simply that these products are engineered to give you that reward response. And as a result of eating those foods, which not only will have the processed oils, but also the sugar in these engineered manners is what's going to actually lead to these downfalls. Here, I'll, before I get to the next tip, I'll show you a little bit of my home gym setup here, just so you know what I'm working with, so maybe you'll be able to apply it yourself. You know, I got my bars here. Actually, you know, I'll turn the camera around. Yeah, it's a complete mess right now, but I got my bench, which is just absolutely destroyed right now. More plates, more ropes, <laughs> resistance bands, a basically a big cluster of just 
resistance and iron, okay? And the whole place is a mess. There's some crappy mirrors here. That was like one from a TV screen. Then I got this like old mirror. I don't know what you want to call it. But basically, there's not much to work with and you have to be resourceful. So that's also why I'm talking about this home workout guide and putting out the hacked home workout handbook because it not only comes down to the training and what you have resource wise, it comes down to the resourcefulness. So that's gonna mean other little tweaks. I mean, I got my little, you know, wrist straps, but the real killer here is blood flow restriction bands and also a certain, a, a certain weightlifting belt that I've been using as well because I had a minor back tweak from what a machine broke on me at the gym when they were open for like a month. So basically, <laughs> there's a lot of ways you can be resourceful, even with nutrition as well as supplementation. So be excited for the Hacked Home Workout Handbook. Now, let's get into the last tip here. The last tip here is to start off slow and gradually move up, okay? So you have to realize, I've been doing keto for a long time. 90% of the year, I eat ketogenic and I will sprinkle in carbohydrates, even if there's like, if, even if that means an entire pizza. I'll have that if the day is appropriate, if I have a date, if I'm out with my friends, if it, that type of a thing, okay? So essentially, you can get to a point where you can have the best of both worlds. And that's actually what's most metabolically healthy for you because then that way you're kind of exercising your liver to basically make ketones, make more glucose and have periods of oscillating between the two. And that's gonna come out very well for you in your lifestyle balance. But when we're looking at starting slow and gradually moving up, you wanna get keto adapted first. You should get all ideas of having carbohydrates out of your mind until you are adapted. So how do you know you're adapted? Well, you don't have to be <laughs> stabbing yourself with blood glucometers and ketone sticks and measuring your blood spit and piss for everything. All you have to do is you have to do keto the right way with no carbohydrates for at least one month, but at the most two months, okay? Somewhere between there is optimal. And if you do that, if you're exercising a lot during that time too, you're basically gonna be making your body acquire a better ability to use fat as fuel from which you won't be making things go on too long where you just completely lose sensitivity to carbohydrates. And I'm not saying that long-term keto is gonna make you insulin resistant, but at first it will be a shock to your body. People will tell you that, oh, all the long-term studies on keto tell you that if you do it too long, you'll lose the ability to lose to use carbs. Complete nonsense, okay? Your ancestors would have been doing keto for at least half a year every year. That would vary depending on where you're from. But at the end of the day, there would be some form of ketogenic metabolism and it would be the default metabolism because even if you had no food at all, that's what your body would revert to. So granted, it will be a shock to your body if you do keto for a very long time and then try to add in carbs like an entire pizza. But the primary thing you have to take away here is it's simply a one-off thing. It's not something that's you know permanent for the rest of your life, but acquiring that fat adaption is. So that's something you wanna get in place and have in a regular rotation dictated by your lifestyle. So scaling up the carbs, start off small. Start with keto for one to two months, the right way, no carbohydrates, because that's all that's required for ketogenic dieting. And then you're gonna start with a small amount of a moderate glycemic carb. You could do high glycemic carb if it's a smaller dose, but the primary thing you wanna know is not to just you know shock your body with this massive glucose spike. And you don't wanna be using fruits or fructose because fructose goes to your liver and that's basically gonna halt ketosis because your liver is kind of the backup team of carbs and you have to clear out the bench before your body knows it wants to go into ketosis and you know use body fat as the primary fuel. You know, our bodies are survival machines and they need to have that demand to do something because they're always gonna take the minimal effort required to keep you alive, right? Think about that. So start off small and after a couple times of using carbs, I recommend a carb backloading manner because carb backloading is one of the best ways to kind of prime your body to take up those carbs, especially in muscle tissue. Watch my video on carb backloading, learn more about that. But the primary thing you have to know is the other, the third primary thing you have to know is start off small, use moderate to high glycemic carbs that are clean, no processed oils, no high fructose corn syrup, no MSG, no other added bullshit kryptonite that's gonna basically throw your neurotransmitters out of whack and make you feel like shit. So don't do that. <laughs> Those are the three tips for not crashing after a carb on keto. And I don't care what anybody else tells you about how, oh, you know, uh, you have to do keto on a, you have to do five days on, two days off. You don't have to do that. I recommend getting keto as the default baseline for you and then putting in carbs as you like. Because if you're somebody who wants to be productive and get a lot of shit done, you have goals in life, ketogenic metabolism is absolutely gonna make you more productive and help you reach those goals. That's why I do it. That's the whole reason why I've been doing it for like nine and a half years at this point. So. If you like this video, like it. That is all you have to do to make YouTube show my content to more people. Subscribe.
follow me on Instagram and go get the Keto Shred program or a consultation or even a 24 seven coaching package, which you have to apply for on my website. But basically go to RomanoKeto.com for those things as well. Thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Romano and leave me some comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out for free as much as I can. Peace.